The Race to Space Vostok 1 During the Cold War, the Soviet Union and the United States emerged as the superpowers of the world, creating cutting-edge technology to demonstrate their strength. One of the most complex endeavors both countries undertook was attempting to put mankind in space, a feat the Soviet Union completed first. The Soviet Union had been attempting to put satellites in space to be able to spy in the West, and had put the first satellite, Sputnik 1, into orbit in 1957. This marked the beginning of the space race between the Soviet Union and the United States. The Soviet program to put man into space was the Vostok program, a program made to build a spacecraft to be used both for manned spaceflight and space espionage. As the Soviet Union was extremely secretive about its work at the time, the program was kept secret down to the smallest detail, even the name. There would be two parts to the whole project, building the spacecraft and selecting the man to go on the mission, which would come later on in the program as the Soviet Union was not yet sure of the possibility of actually putting humans in space. The Vostok spaceship was designed with two goals in mind, one being to get mankind to space, and the other to mount camera equipment. Soviet rocket technology had been comparable to Germany's in the 1930s, but Stalin's executions of many scientists severely set back the Soviet field of rocket science. Due to this, the Soviet-designed spacecraft was unstable, and several prototypes had to be built before the first Soviet cosmonaut could journey into outer space. Two main prototypes were built before the main one, the first prototype was named Vostok 1K, and due to its secrecy, very few details are known about it today. It is possible that the Soviet Union even gave false information about the spacecraft. The second prototype was named Vostok 2K, and was similar to the Vostok 1K. However, it also had mountings and riggings for camera equipment, and could send and receive signals from space. The Vostok 3K was the final design of the spacecraft and would ultimately become the spacecraft in which Yuri Gagarin would make his famous spaceflight. The design consisted of one spherical descent capsule, an instrument module, and a thruster for navigation. Once the craft re-entered the atmosphere, the thruster and instrument module would fall away. The cosmonaut would then eject from the descent capsule and parachute down to land. In total, the Vostok 3K weighed 2,460 kilograms and could carry only one person. During re-entry into the atmosphere, the craft could experience forces of gravity eight times the force of gravity on Earth. Combined with the Soviet engineering, the trip could be extremely dangerous. While the spacecraft was being built, the Soviets had also been choosing one person to go on the mission. Preparations had begun in January of 1959, as had the selection process. The project physicians stated that the potential cosmonauts all had to be male, former Air Force pilots. The chief designer of the spacecraft stated that the cosmonauts could not be over 1.75 meters or weigh over 72 kilograms. Approximately 200 people had been picked from the interviews conducted by the program by September of 1959. By October of the same year, the nominees had undergone tests to determine their physical strength, which narrowed the choice down to 20 people. In January of 1960, a training facility was established for the 20 remaining people. The training facility provided a fitness regime, as well as classes on rocket space systems, navigation, and astronomy. While some nominees were training at the training facility, some went to a new facility that housed a spacecraft simulator due to the inefficiency of having to train 20 cosmonauts in one facility. These people were called the Vanguard Six, and originally consisted of Yuri Gagarin, Anatoly Kartashov, Andriy Nikolaev, Pavel Popovich, German Titov, and Valentin Varlamov. In January of 1960, every person from the Vanguard Six had completed parachute and recovery training and took their exams. Yuri Gagarin had the best results, and therefore had the most priority to go to space. The Soviets had also learned of America's ability to launch a suborbital spaceflight by the next year, and the lead designer for the project wanted to launch an orbital spaceflight 
before the Americans could launch a suborbital space flight. Before his mission, Yuri Gagarin received a medical check, after which the doctor suited him up and checked the equipment. Gagarin was also told that the spaceship was controlled from Earth, and the head of training of the program told him the code to gain manual control of the rocket. Gagarin was informed to jump out of the capsule upon re-entry and taken to the launch site in Baikonur. Gagarin slept for the night before the mission. At 5.30 a.m., Gagarin was woken up, given breakfast, suited up, and transported to the launch site. Gagarin entered the spacecraft, after which it was checked for any system's malfunctions. The hatch was found to be incompletely sealed, and engineers spent 40 minutes to seal it. At 9.07, the rocket lifted off. 25 minutes after the flight took off, a stable orbit around Earth was established. Having flown over all of Siberia and part of the Pacific Ocean by 24 minutes in, Gagarin was forced to use HF radio systems. After approximately an hour in orbit, the module's engines angled the module back to Earth, and after some slight malfunctions with the instrument model separating from the descent capsule, the spacecraft re-entered the atmosphere. Yuri Gagarin returned safely to Earth at 11.05 after parachuting out of the capsule at nearly 7 kilometers in midair. Upon stepping foot on Earth, he spotted a farmer and asked for a telephone to call Moscow. After calling the mission headquarters, he was taken back to Moscow. Yuri Gagarin was the first man to ever go into orbit around Earth and was awarded the Hero of the Soviet Union Award for his bravery. After his flight, many nations expressed both positive and negative opinions about the Soviet Union's ability to reach space. The Vostok 1 mission had set a new world record, one that would inspire mankind for ages to come. Thank you for watching this video, and as always, if you enjoyed, leave a like or a favorite, share the video with your friends, or even subscribe for more educational content. Check out some of the other videos on this channel, or check out the featured channels for more videos.